uh, right understanding. Uh, you all have the papers with you. I don't know whether you have them now. <coughs> we had uh, <coughs> not only today's handout but earlier papers. We came to uh, uh, what is that? Uh, Jaramarana, and then we started from there and went down <coughs> to <coughs> uh, what is before consciousness? Namaro. Huh? Mentality material is Did we discuss that? No. We did. We did? Yeah. Okay. Mentality and materiality. We discuss it. Now I want to ask you all, uh, what is uh, mentality, what is materiality? Now if we discuss with you here in the class, at least uh, some of you should remember. <coughs> Four elements, okay. Mentality are the five things. Five? Five uh, mental factors starting with attention. Right. Uh, <coughs> uh, contact. Uh, feelings. Uh, uh, intention. <laughs> Perception. 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 If you remember the Pali words, it will be much easier. Passa Vedana Sanya Chaitana Manasikara. Passa Vedana Sanya Chaitana Manasikara. These five together called mentality. Then the four aggregates, Patriya Potejo Vayu. Materiality. Okay. Uh, depending on mentality and materiality is consciousness. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, consciousness is a very big subject. Uh, people ask, uh, what is consciousness? Where is consciousness? How can we be conscious of consciousness and so forth? Uh, in uh, many places, Buddha used the word vinyana. Uh, if you remember three words, sanya, panya, vinya. O vinya sanya panya. In all you see nya 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 nya. Vinya sanya panya. Vinya is the basis of everything. And uh, to give an analogy is like uh, when you uh, throw a piece of gold to a little child, child would start playing. Child would simply see the color, the shape. So the child has uh, uh, vinya to know an object. Beyond that, child does not know anything about the gold. If you give the gold, piece of gold, to an adult, that person will say, oh, this is very valuable. 
I can make a, a ring, bangle, or something like this out of this. This is this has a market value. Uh, he does not know anything further than that. It has. He knows that this is a valuable thing. It has a market value. I can make something out of this, and that much he knows. That is much more than the child knows. You give it to a mythologist. Mythologist will tell you, this uh, this is uh, uh, 18 carat, 21 carat, gold. This has this much market value. This must be in the ground for so many years to turn into gold and this will be available in such and such a place. Uh, you can sell this for this amount and so forth. He almost everything about gold he knows. Now uh, Sanya is like child knowing gold. Sanya. Uh, no, Vinya. Vinya is like child knowing gold. Sanya is adults knowing gold. Panya is metallurgist knowing gold. So, <coughs> Vinya is the basis. Uh, then Sanya, then Panya. So we use the basis of uh, uh, sanya, oh sorry, uh, uh, vinya, vinya, vinya as the basis for developing. We develop that uh, vinya to become attain sanya and to gain panya, wisdom. And therefore, in this sense, uh, vinya is the basis. So we have uh, primarily six vinyas. They are called chakku vinyana, sota vinyana, gana vinyana, jiva vinyana, kaya vinyana, mano vinyana. Meaning, we see things with eyes and See the color, a shape. Uh, I think that's all we can see with eyes. Similarly, with ears, we just hear the sound. When we smell, we just smell and taste, touch, and mind object. First time, we just know them, beyond that there is nothing. Then we have to still spend time using other factors to go to the, to deeper into these areas. That is how we have mentality. <coughs> mentality has contact, feeling, perception, volition, and attention. Only when these five come together, that primary uh, vinya uh, multiplies and becomes rich, strong, powerful. Without these five mental factors, uh, vinya does not grow. It remains in the basic basic state. So sanya, uh, what do you call uh, vinya? There are three other kinds of vinya. I said uh, you can see this in the list. Uh, mind consciousness after that you have death consciousness. Uh, marana. Uh, that is called uh, Chuti Chitta, 
Vijnana uh, at the moment of death uh, and then uh, rebirth consciousness, Patisandhi Chitta. And then there is another consciousness called life continuum, that's called Bhavanga Chitta. Now in these three places, instead of Vijnana, Chitta is used. Now, I think some time ago I mentioned there are three names for the mind. What are the three names? Chitta, Chitta Manu, Vijnana. Now, the same Vijnana is changed its name when it comes to death consciousness life continuum consciousness and rebirth consciousness. All are con three stages of consciousness. Because uh, as I, I mentioned these three names for consciousness are synonymous and we must understand them according to the context. Since they are synonymous, one of them we can use at any time we want. Uh, therefore, rebirth consciousness is not called uh, marana vijnana or life continuum is not called uh, bhava vijnana. Bhavangi chitta, there we use the word chitta, chuti chitta. Bhavanga Chitta and Patisandhi Chitta. You can use Chitta, instead of Chitta you can even use Mano, Vijnana, but traditionally they are used they are in these places, only the word Chitta is used. <coughs> so Bhante, we have all these different words in Pali, but then we just use consciousness in English, only just one word, right? I mean, doesn't that make it harder to explain? That is, uh, in English, uh, we choose one word, perhaps uh, uh, they are, they don't elaborate this word. Mm. In, uh, in English, but uh, they simply use the word consciousness. Uh, but uh, they don't have separate word for chitta and mano and vijnana. Mm. For vijnana they use only, uh, only one word, only that word they use out of these three. I think they also imply other two as well mm. uh, when they use. But uh, in uh, Buddhist terminology, these are very precise. Uh, as you know, we deal with uh, religious, uh, spiritual matters. Mm. When we deal with spiritual matters, we have to have a very special spiritual vocabulary. English is not a spiritual language. Mm. It's a secular language, a spoken language, language used for commerce, business and day-to-day -day dealing. Uh, so we cannot find uh, as many words is, uh, to express something spiritual right. uh, in English. Uh, so it is not easy for us to uh, compare these two languages, Pali and English. Uh, English is the most sophisticated, uh, widely spoken, language. Pali is, is restricted to spiritual matters. Mm -hmm. And therefore they have uh, more word for spiritual matters uh, than the secular languages. For instance, no Pali word can be found for science and technology, microbiology, 
పార్టికల్ ఫిజిక్స్ వీళ్ళకో బయో ఫిజిక్స్ ఆస్ట్రోనమీ అండ్ సో ఫోర్త్ దిస్ ఆర్ మోడర్న్ సబ్జెక్ట్ ది ఎవ్రీ డే దే కోయిన్ న్యూ వర్డ్స్ ఇన్ ద స్పోకన్ లాంగ్వేజ్ దట్ ఈస్ అవ్ ఇట్ కీప్స్ గ్రోవింగ్ అండ్ కన్సిక్వెంట్లీ దే మూవ్ ఫార్ అవే ఫ్రమ్ స్పిరిచువల్ ఫీల్డ్ స్పిరిచువల్ లాంగ్వేజ్ స్పిరిచువల్ ప్రాక్టీసెస్ అండ్ దే ఫోర్ యూ కెనాట్ మ్యాచ్ దీస్ టు దీస్ టూ గో యూ నో ఇన్ టూ డిఫరెంట్ డిరెక్షన్స్ so so any time we see uh, an object or hear a sound or is called something taste something or touch something um, tangible or think a thought feeling perception volitional formations contact and attention arise together with them any time that is why mentality always goes with consciousness consciousness is the basis all mental other factors are based on consciousness uh, so i and form come to with i consciousness arises as you know uh and therefore dependent on mentality uh, dependent on depend upon consciousness mentality and materiality rise depend upon consciousness <coughs> so how does consciousness arise uh, dependent upon volitional formations so we see and the i consciousness ear consciousness and so on these six kind of consciousness uh, so when they arise the the factor that becomes aware of all of them is consciousness uh, and therefore consciousness is treated separately from other for five mental factors because it is the sort of uh, overall sort of supervisor the overall power of of all of them so we uh, and and any of these five mental factors do not operate without consciousness those five mental factors that we mentioned earlier and the consciousness arises along with the contact feeling perception volitional formations and attention attention arises along with consciousness attention arises with along with feeling attention arises with perception attention arises with volitional formations feeling arises along with contact and consciousness you can see the list there hmm so uh, contact arises with feeling and consciousness and uh, contact arises along with attention and consciousness then mental verbal and physical activities arise along with contact and consciousness mental verbal and physical activities arise with feeling and consciousness you see then uh, mental verbal and uh, physical activities arise along with perception and consciousness mental verbal and physical activities arise along with attention and consciousness <coughs> if you become unconscious or are made unconscious then you don't feel we cannot feel anything if we are unconscious 
so they can anybody can do anything to our body when the consciousness is not there so long as we have a nervous system uh, alive active then consciousness is there if the nervous system is paralyzed by artificial means or by uh, stroke through stroke and so forth nervous system paralyzed then uh, consciousness is there but it uh, does not feel because the nervous system is the agent that brings feeling to the consciousness uh that means uh the consciousness arises uh contact feeling perception thought and attention arise along with the consciousness so they reinforce each other uh contact feeling perception volition formations and attention reinforce each other uh and they all depend on consciousness always we must remember consciousness is the base and as the buddha said consciousness is the seed uh what is the field kam kam is the field what is the moisture craving, craving. so that was that is why in rebirth consciousness this seed is there what seed eh all our good and bad karmic seed is there and the, the consciousness is the seed and all good and bad are the fields where this consciousness seed is planted now they both are ready to take rebirth and then desire desire to exist moisture them nourish to to uh, keep them alive mm. so <clears throat> the consciousness get nutriment from craving and uh, it grows in that uh, environment so <clears throat> if there is no karma that ripens in the uh, element of sensual plane there is no sensual plane existence uh, now if the consciousness is uh, uh the seed to be planted in the uh, sensual plane then uh, that is the karma we have committed to be born in sensual plane and the consciousness seed would plant there in the sensual plane if the the karmic feel is prepared for as to be born in a heavenly realm then the consciousness seed will be planted there uh, and then desire nourishes it so in each plane of existence is the is the field where this consciousness with its own karmic seed is planted and desire for existence comes and keeps nourishing the root uh now during meditation what kind of uh, seed be planted in our consciousness wholesome seed yeah. wholesome seed it can be 
planted in human realm, divine realm, Brahma realm, or remove all the uh, desire uh, to be born during meditation. And therefore, if somebody dies in meditation without greed, hatred, and delusion, that person will not take rebirth anywhere. Mm, that's like an arahant. Like arahant. They are, because in, in their mind, there are no greed, hatred, and delusion. And therefore, when they die, there is no karmic seed there. All others have karmic seed to take birth in various places. So the consciousness doesn't, the field, I see field is not there. Yeah. And uh, Buddha said, this consciousness does not go anywhere leaving mentality and materiality. Consciousness doesn't go anywhere leaving mentality and materiality. Always it returns to mentality and materiality. There is no way the consciousness can lodge somewhere without mentality and materiality. That means the contact, feeling, perception, thought and attention, these, without these five, and form, feeling, perception and consciousness, what do you call elements, earth, air, water, fire elements. Without these elements, without these five mentality, consciousness will never exist. And therefore, no matter what we think, uh, that object must have four elements and uh, five mental factors. We are addicted to this consciousness, right? We love consciousness because of the consciousness. We see it, we admire things, we taste it. We So we because of our consciousness, that gives us an opportunity for us to cling. Or yeah. To have a foundation. Yeah. In instance, in, in one Sutta somewhere, Buddha describes that having a consciousness is like, is equivalent if somebody shoots you an arrow, like, Hundred arrows in the morning, hundred arrows in the afternoon. Right, that is in the under, yeah. under, under. Uh, what do you call four nutrients? Four nutrients. What are the four nutrients? We have passed it. Huh? Material food. What? Food, material food. Like yes. Contact. Contact. Thought. Thought. Consciousness. Consciousness. Right. Kabalinkarahara, Pasahara, Manosanchetana, Vinyanahara. Material food, contact, feeling, and consciousness. They are in the chart. Although they are not in the mind, but in the chart. Right. <laughs> so, I think this chart is very important. Everybody must take a picture, and, and you and you join together and made it, right? Yeah, they, they, he started and we improved it. Yeah. yeah. So you remember that. <clears throat> so, uh, those f two groups, two groups, mentality factors and material factors, are the, f are the domain of consciousness. Without that, consciousness can never arise. Buddha compared in that four nutrients. Contact is like a, a skin cow. Remember last time I mentioned it, a skin cow. He used the cow, any animal, if you skin, you don't have to remove all the skin of that animal. Even if you remove two, three inches of skin from the body, wherever the being is, 
even wind blows there's pain when the sun shines there's pain go to water water the cold in temperature in the water make it feel insect in the water make them sick uh, feel so that is the nature of contact that means wherever you are you contact something and then feeling rises pasahar mano mano sanchetana har is like beating uh no mano sanchetana har is uh, fire there's a fire somebody is trying to very strong people try to drag you into the fire you struggle to you know to get free yes. that is compared to mano vinya mano sanchedanara vinyanara is a man who was a robber who was caught and beat 100 flogs in the morning 100 in the noon 100 in a whip Hundred times in the morning, hundred times in the daytime, hundred times at night. Vinyanar, because it is so sensitive. Uh, of course, kabbaling karahar is uh, compared to eating uh, flesh of a child, mm. one's own child. So anyway. <coughs> uh, पच्चुदावत दिबेक्वेमंगजानूपम ना परम गति बुद्ध से दिस सेंटेंस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रूम पच्युदावत दिबेक्वे दिमंगजान नाम रूपम ना परम गति दिस कॉन्शियने ओलवेज रिटर्न टू मेन्टलिटी एंड मेटीरियल नाम रूपम ना परम गति डस् नॉट गो बी ऑन दैट देर इज नो वे plays that consciousness can exist without mentality and materiality that is very clear for instance if you think of a brahma brahma whether it is hindu brahmas or buddhist brahmas or whatever brahma what comes to your mind a form mm-hmm. form is one of the material objects now what do you call one of the four elements uh, of five aggregates mm-hmm. one of the five aggregates uh, so if you think of uh, in another divine being only as a form comes to our mind the shape sometimes even uh, color appears in our mind depending on our own conditioning uh, therefore um, the mentality consciousness is there vinyana is there vinyana of the form is there vinyana of the color is there so there is nothing in the world that we can think of without mentality and materiality so ante i have a question so <coughs> uh, consciousness goes with mind and mentality and materiality they, they both very interdependent so when we do meditate we are trying to are we are we should we try to kind of break it without getting into mentality and material right we can break that is what is called visankara gata chittam visankara gata anidarsana vinyana anidarsana vinyana visankara chi vinyana we have in the list i think we have that somewhere <coughs> uh let me i want to emphasize this for us to remember that uh, when we try to talk about consciousness 
we always must remember these two factors together. What are the two factors? Mentality and materiality. In Mahanidana Sutta, Mahanidana Sutta, Buddha said, when the consciousness uh, ascend or descend, descend to mother's womb, if only then the fetus will grow. If the consciousness descend to mother's womb and left, fetus will not grow. But consciousness alone cannot exist in the mother's womb without fetus. That is materiality. The materiality support mentality, mentality support materiality. These two always go together. And therefore, whenever the mind travels, it travels between these two. It's a sort of yo-yo existence. It goes there and comes back to that. It doesn't exist by itself. <coughs> so it's like life. I mean, it's not calling consciousness. Why can't we call it life? Like, that's what it seems like. It's like being alive. Yeah, being alive is uh, uh, partially right, correct. But uh, one can be, one can have consciousness without uh, uh, sort of uh, actively participating in life. For instance, somebody is uh, uh, unconscious. It is a, it is only part of it, but materiality exists. Yes. That materiality will never completely die without if the consciousness is there. Even, even if somebody is unconscious, some form of consciousness exists in that being to keep the body alive. Only when the consciousness completely left the body, then the, we can then that person is can be declared dead. But when someone <coughs> dies, Bhante, the mentality leaves, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Mental leaves that the materiality remains. 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 And they just cannot survive because of their... Materiality, mentality is not there. Not there. The, the body uh, bereft of mentality cannot exist. That is why in, uh, in, in the Dhammapada there is a stanza, we recite in Marana Sati discourse, Ayusma cha vinyana yada kaya jantimam apaviddo tadaseti niradhangva kalingara. Ayu, Usma, vinyana, these three, once left the body, the body is like a piece of wood. I mean, worse than a piece of wood. A piece of wood you can burn to make fire. But body, you cannot use it for firewood. It's useless. Oh no. Eh? Oh no. <laughs> Why oh no? Because Lee is wood. None of us. More than the rest of us. We all are worse than wood. <laughs> worse than wood. <coughs> Wood you can use to burn, to get some heat. Mm. <laughs> I think uh, this also can be burnt if uh, uh, all the watery part is burnt, but oil is there in the body. Mm. This oil can keep burning. So anyway, <laughs> so, <coughs> So in material existence, we say material existence and material existence, right? Rupi, Arupi, Asanya, Sanyi. 
we recite every day rupi arupi asanya sanyi that means rupi brahma loka arupi brahma loka asanya brahma loka and only sanyi brahma loka there is a saying hita misa kaya nati bamba loka satareki hita misa kaya nati bamba loka satareki that means there are four realms without uh, body only consciousness exists i think i mentioned this sometimes ago in last year one of my classes that conscious the, the materiality there exists so insignificantly that it is said that there is no mental materiality as we said earlier consciousness cannot exist without materiality cannot exist the just now we said consciousness always return to mentality and materiality even in that state <coughs> body does not exist for this and consciousness exists that is four stages in that statement that existence materiality exists in the subtlest form which is so insignificant you cannot put your finger to show this is materiality but without that consciousness cannot exist there are go there is materiality in that state so trees have consciousness from the eh? trees like a tree do like, they have consciousness the cells in the trees there is like a tree yeah uh, yeah <coughs> perhaps that is why many people think the trees have life right they worship trees they have bodhi puja and they have many songs composed to respect bodhi tree and they believe the huge banyan trees have life mm. and even here <coughs> when they see very huge majestic looking very tall tree they think this is a life mm. you do see you feel that this is so huge so magnificent large old and people say old wise oak tree <laughs> don't we say that mm. old white wise oak tree it looks very very much a uh, wise person i read in one of uh, uh, read in a book a modern book uh, somebody wrote uh, uh, in that book uh, certain jataka story in that jataka story <coughs> there was a, a crane mm. crane who, who ran out of fish in a certain pond pond was, was drying out and uh, fish population slowly dwindled down so the uh, the this crane uh went to another pond and there are a lot of fish so this uh, crane told those fish in that pond new pond pond where a lot of fish now no no i think that uh, 
this other way around. Didn't the crane tell the fish, I'll take you to a... I take you there. I'll take you there. Huh? I'll take you. I take you there and uh, you can live there comfortably. If you don't believe, volunteer one of them, I take you there and I, ta I take him there and show him the lake and then return. Mm. Then you can trust me. So one volunteer, he took him, actually showed and brought it back. Then everyone volunteered and so he took everyone else. There was a huge tree sitting on the tree. He ate all of them. Then finally came the crab term, turn. Mm. Then the uh, crane uh, picked the crab. Uh, crab said, uh, oh, don't, 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 don't touch my head like this. I can uh, hold on to your neck. Mm. He has two, what do you call this? Uh, Pinchers. Huh? Pinchers. Pinchers. Claws. Pinchers. Yeah. Claws. Yeah. Claws. Yeah. Claws. <clears throat> I can hold on to your neck and you fly. So he held on to his neck and flew and sat on the tree and told the crab, you think I'm going to put you in the lake? I'm going to eat you up right now. Then crab said, oh, uh, then he immediately pressed his claws against his neck and tightened it. Then Crab said, oh, Crane said, oh, no, don't do that too hard. I feel pain. Now, either you take me back to my previous leg or I will cut your throat into two pieces. So he brought him back and left there. As soon as he left there, the crab, you know, tightened his uh, claws and cut his crane's neck. That is the story. So the writer says, how do you know the story? But because the crab is dead, crane is dead, oh. but you know the story. How do you know? This old tree remembered the story. <laughs> the tree told us. So some people, you know, make stories like this uh, and say, even the trees can talk. <laughs> where is that story, Bhante? Me? Where is that story? Where can, you, where can I find that story? Jataka story. Jataka story. Jantaka tales have uh, 555 stories. 550. In our library, there is a Jataka story, both in English and translation. Okay. Is that the book you gave me? No, okay. this is like the original. It's it's old, right? I mean, it's from Buddha's time or later. In... No, no, no. Jataka stories are commentary. It's called Jataka Attakata. Hmm. Attakata means commentaries. That's it? Okay. I think they started writing after even 8th century. Mm -hmm. But original uh, instances are there. Mm -hmm. This is called Jataka, not Attakata. Mm -hmm. Jataka. There are um, several thousands of instances. We have them in our library. Mm -hmm. Jataka. Jataka is. Uh, The Dhamma has been divided into nine groups called Nava, Sattu, Sasana. They are Sutta, Geya, Vayakarana, Jataka, Udana, Iti Uttaka, uh, Sutta, Geya, Vayakarana, Gata, Udana, Iti Uttaka, uh, then, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Nida, what do you call, Nidesa, Chula Nidesa, Maha Nidesa, and uh, uh, Netipakarana. 
these are called nine limbs. One of them is Jataka. And Jataka is one Jataka. Atthakata uh, was, uh, they were in Sri Lanka, in Sinhalese. When the Buddha was translated them into Pali. And therefore now they are called Jataka Atthakata. Mm. Buddha Gosa was there in the uh, 5th century in Sri Lanka, 5th mm. century, Christian era. Oh. And therefore Jataka Attakata, Jataka stories are composed much, much, much later after Buddha's passing. But beautiful stories, many beautiful lessons we can learn from those stories. <clears throat> anyway, Then, uh, you can see the Sankara base uh, of consciousness, Sankara. <coughs> Sankaras are very, very, uh, there are three types of Sankaras. What are they? Anijabi. That is one category of Sankara. Kaya there are Chitta Sankara. Okay. What is Kaya Sankara? Asasa Pasasa. What is Sankara? Vitaka Vichara. Chitta Sankara? Sanya Vedana. Okay. Now, Punya Abhisankara, Punya Abhisankara, Ananya Abhisankara are committed because of these other type of Sankaras. Punya uh, Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, Chitta Sankara. Uh, Kaya Sankara is inhaling and exhaling. Mm. And that is how the body is, body is conditioned mm. through the oxygen. And they are absolutely necessary for us to commit wholesome or unwholesome or neutral karma. Without the body functioning, we cannot do that. Vachi Sankara is also important because we have to talk, we have to think, to speak. And the thought can be wholesome or unwholesome. And that is how uh, ra- really Sankara uh, starts. Wholesome Sankara, unwholesome Sankara, Anindyabhi Sankara starts from the thought. Uh, that is uh, Chitta, what do you call Vachi Sankara. Although we call Vachi Sankara because we express words uh, after thinking, the real Sankaras are not the word but the thought. That is why. The karma is called chetana, thinking. Karma we committed through words and deeds, but the source of karma is the thought. So, consciousness is always in all of them. Kaya Sankara consciousness is there, consciousness is there in Vajji Sankara, Consciousness is there in Mano Sankara or Chitta Sankara. And therefore, in dependent origination, Sankara Pachya Vijnana. Sankara Pachya Vijnana. We have to have these three types of Sankaras, or both categories of three, three. One group is uh, uh, Kaya Sankara, Chitta Sankara, Vachi Sankara. Other group is wholesome, unwholesome, and imperturbable. Punya Sankara, Punya Sankara, Aninya Sankara. Punya Sankara is wholesome, Apunya is unwholesome. Aninja means? No results. Eh? No results. No, 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 no. no. Neutral? Uh, Aninja is. Also, 
wholesome, wholesome sankara. But they are, when you attain jhanas, all the four jhanas, those sankaras are called aninyabhi sankara, unshakable sankara. Especially after attaining the arupa, immaterial jhanas, your sankaras are so powerful, and therefore they are called aninyabhi sankara. Apunyabhi sankara is unknown. Now, neutral, there is no neutral sankara. Neutral sankara is just uh, if there is any, this table, cup, all these are neutral sankaras. They have no consciousness. <coughs> they are in the widest sense of the term sankara. Everything is sankara. Everything came into existence through causes and condition a sankara. Anything with this computer, this microphone, or anything, sankara, in that sense. But in the dependent origination, uh, we don't deal with all these uh, immaterial, what you call inanimate things. In the dependent origination, Dependent origination deals only with sankharas that have consciousness, mentality, materiality. Okay? So, Bhante, this uh, sankhara of jhana, because in that particular sankhara, are we above that consciousness is beyond this mentality, materiality, like we at least we rise above this? No, 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 no. Or because <coughs> some of them, they try to describe that uh, at least that consciousness level, we can we can be <coughs> above, like we don't feel the pain, we don't feel the hot and cold. So feeling is not there, you know, all sensations are not there. So because a lot of... Feeling is there. If you, if you see... Uh, uh, Indri Bhavana Sutta in Madhyaminikaya, Indri Bhavana Sutta, there Buddha deals with uh, Upekha, equanimity. Equanimity is a feeling. Uh, that is so, uh, that is where you, your mind does not react to anything, because it is so in a equipoise. Uh, such an equanimity state, uh, everything is in is a is a balanced state. state. Therefore, mind doesn't react. Uh, that is called akupa, akampita, akampita chitta. Uh, that too you can see even in Mangala Sutta, last stanza, Puttasa Loka Dhammehi Chittam Yasana Kampati. Mind will not shake. But the equanimous mental state is there. Yeah. Pante, so going back to the, the four uh, formless realms uh, in the Janic states, so they are, um, you know, infinite space, infinite consciousness, and nothingness, and another thing about perception. Neither perception. Neither perception, no perception. Mm -hmm. So does that mean, so only one has consciousness. So in that, that is infinite consciousness. So it makes sense to say the the materiality part is insignificant. On the other three realms, where nothingness and the uh, infinite space, there is no consciousness. Or what is the <laughs> what is the significance of consciousness on those three? Yeah, uh, that is the mental state one develops. 
seeing uh, the danger of uh, any material state. Uh, so, uh, is called Sanya Bhavana. And then uh, attain the state. But uh, even in that state, uh, even though the person thinks and feels there is nothing, in reality, it is not possible for that individual or that state of mind to exist without the finest uh, state of mentality and materiality according to the Buddha's teaching. As, we, as I mentioned in uh, Vipassi Buddha, among seven Buddhas, Vipassi Buddha is the number one, Vipassi, Siki, Vesabhu, Kakusanda, Konagama, Kasapa, Gautama, seven Buddhas. And Gautama Buddha always referred to Vipassi Buddha. You can see in Sanghita Nikaya. You can see in Nata Nati Sutta in Diga Nikaya. That the Buddha referred to Vipassi Buddha. In Sanghita Nikaya, Buddha said, Vipassi Buddha himself has said, this is Gautama Buddha says, Gautama Buddha is quoting Vipassi Buddha and says, he said, Pachudavati the bhikkhu imang vinyana nāparaṁ gacchati. Pachudavati bhikkhu imang vinyana nāma rūpamma nāparaṁ gacchati. This consciousness does not go beyond mentality and materiality. If that is so, even this nothingness state, there must be certain degree of mentality and materiality. Although it is called nothing, so it, 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 it has to be consistent. Buddha's teaching must be consistent. Then, how do you realize non, like, non-self or ashu? You know, that it is uh, like that uh, two-year-old child, two-year-old child uh, can ask uh, uh, seeing an acrobat, two-year-old child ask, uh, how can you do that? I cannot do that. The fact that the child cannot do that doesn't mean adults cannot do it. When we are not attained, we have not attained that state, living in this state we cannot uh, gauge their state. I think my best answer is, therefore, try to attain their state. Mm-hmm. Then, then only you can get the answer. Without attaining that, we just have to believe in what we read. Only thing we can see that that all these things are not me, not mine, not myself. That's what we have to gain the wisdom that right. don't get attached to cling to any of this, any of the states, <coughs> anywhere. There's nothing permanent. These are all dependent on consciousness and mentality, materiality, which are both mm. sankhara and they. They're subject to pass on. Yeah. Move on. They're not permanent. That is very true. So long as we have this attachment to anything. We cannot understand what detachment is, right? We cannot understand what dispassion is with being, with being in passion, right? Being in greed, we cannot understand what state is without greed, and therefore. These sort of things are uh, not unachievable, humanly possible, humanly achievable. And uh, so what we have to do is to strive very hard, at least get close to that state, 
then we will can we will we will we can have some inferential knowledge of it. Okay. Now, I think I want to conclude this um, since I'm getting tired. I think uh, last uh, group I want to discuss is that uh, uh, consciousness we cannot isolate and discuss. This is consciousness. Although we said all these things uh, in our mind, we cannot. Although we have consciousness, and we are conscious, but we cannot isolate it from everything else. Therefore, in Mahasatipatta Sutta, consciousness is given with its contents. Consciousness with greed, consciousness without greed, consciousness with hatred, consciousness without hatred, consciousness delusion, consciousness without delusion. The contracted consciousness, distracted consciousness, unconcentrated consciousness, concentrated consciousness, surpassed consciousness, unsurpassed consciousness, uh, then uh, liberated consciousness, unliberated consciousness. Pante, the fifteenth one, liberated consciousness. Right. Is that the consciousness not clinging to Nama Rupa? Right. You see, <coughs> this is the liberated means. Uh, this is, we are in the training stage. Training stage, we can definitely see when the mind is liberated temporarily for a very brief period of time. At that time, we should be able to recognize, ah, this is the state where there is no greed, hatred, and delusion. We experience that. And next moment, we will have them back again. Yeah. So, our goal should be <laughs> if possible, to have a consciousness which will not cling to uh, mentality and materiality right. all the time. Right. By maintaining uh, <coughs> uh, manasikara, attention. That is why Buddha said, Visankara gatan chitta tannana kaimantika. Visankara gatan chitta. The consciousness became free from sankara. We can make the consciousness free from sankara. Uh, what what kind of sankara? Punya bi sankara, punya bi sankara, aninja bi sankara. But we cannot live without kaya sankara, vachi sankara, chitta sankara. Kaya sankara is absolutely necessary for living because of the breathing, oxygen. Chitta Sankara is perception and feeling. We certainly feel and perceive. Vachi Sankara, we definitely have to have thought, to talk, to express. Uh, and therefore, these three kinds of Sankaras we have to have. Even if you attain full enlightenment, these three types, Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara, Chitta Sankara, exist. What we are free from will be punya sankara, punya sankara, ananya sankara. Wholesome sankara, unwholesome sankara, and imperturbable sankara. Yeah. In a way, those three are very logical with respect to 31 planes. Yeah. Even yeah. Because when you do punya bi, apunya bi sankara, unwholesome, then go, then go to level four. Yeah. Punya vi sankara, then you are in human realm, hi, or hi. the deities, six worlds, yeah. or uh, th those places. When you do, uh, when, when uh, it is an uh, uh, anjavi, uh, then you will be either in a Brahma form realms or formless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, in other words, 
so long as we have any sankhara of that cat of any sankhara of these three categories we are in the cycle of sankhara sansara so sankhara is the backpack that takes us into sansara okay when this backpack is exhausted then no more in sansara these two words are very very sort of uh, uh, what do you call we can play with these two words uh, sankhara is the backpack for sansara journey when sankhara is over sansara journey is over right <laughs> we have the laptop in our back <laughs> <laughs> You, you have more than back, um, you know. Laptop. Laptop. Okay, I think this is enough for today. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.